a longer than usual video because there's multiple things to discuss today. Make sure you leave your comments at the end about the new song. It's called, I Want to Talk About Me. Um, I kind of like it. I think it's a snazzy tune. Anyway, here we go into a much longer than usual video. Enjoy. I wanted to do a follow-up to the story that I originally posted about um, Meghan Markle and Harry allowing Eugenie and her husband to move into their home. Now, as we all know from my previous videos, Meghan Markle and Harry had some moving vehicles show up in the middle of the night, pack up the house and leave, and supposedly they're letting, out of the goodness of their hearts, they're letting Jack and Eugenie live in the house until their child is born. There were several theories as to why they were allowing this, but the most prevalent one was that they weren't coming back to the UK and that the Frogmore Cottage was very close to the Queen and to Eugenie's parents. A story also came out that said that Harry and Meghan had been paying rent, which we all knew the Queen asked them to start paying rent once they stepped back, but that they had paid rent up front through March of the year. Blind Item, who's usually pretty spot on, posted that Meghan and Harry wanted Eugenie and Jack to pay $10,000 a month in rent, supposedly to pay them back for the rent they had already put in. So essentially, that means Eugenie and Jack were subletting. Now, $10,000 a month rent sounds about right because Harry and Meghan were paying just a smidge shy of $22,000 a month, which was rent and also part of the 13-year plan to pay back the money for the renovations at Frogmore. Now it's come out that six weeks after moving in, Eugenie and Jack have moved out. And everybody's like, why did they only stay for six weeks? And my comment to several people was, I bet Mer Meghan and Harry wanted a lot of rent. And the queen probably said, you're not paying them rent. And so Harry and Meghan said, well, if you're not going to pay, you got to get out. And with that, Blind Item put out yet another item. Again, they're usually spot on that again, the $10,000 a month that they were requesting didn't go over well. And apparently they tried to blackmail Eugenie and Jack. Somehow that just doesn't surprise me. Now, what could these two possibly have been blackmailed over? The only thing I can think of is Prince Andrew, who is Eugenie's father. So much for them having a close relationship. The next thing I want to touch on is Megan's speech that she surprised CNN with. I mean, come on, you can't surprise CNN. Wouldn't have shocked me at all to find out that they paid to have it aired. And I say that because just like with the New York Times, when she paid to have her miscarriage story come out, CNN has plugged the tweet about Megan's speech three times in the last eight hours. I guess Megan and Harry have to get their money's worth. And now let's look at the shirt she's wearing, shall we? Of all the shirts in all the world that she possibly could have worn, she chose to wear a shirt that was also worn by the Empress of Japan, a lady with fabulous taste and class. Another point to be made, as you can see from the pictures above, is whenever Meghan Markle wears a shirt that's a button-up or what they call a button-down, she leaves it practically open to her belly button because she wants everybody to see her cleavage. Suddenly, she's wearing this shirt. And I believe she's trying to copy Kate in Kate's style. And I also believe that the pick of the shirt was part of her new PR team's push to change her image. Secondly, let's look at her speech because there's elements in the speech that obviously came from Princess Diana. Where Megan said that the warmth of a meal can be like having arms around you, you know, giving you that needed comforting hug. And here is where Diana stated during her interview with Martin Bashir that food is like having somebody wrap their arms around you. And I want to throw one more bit of information on here. Do you guys remember back when Harry and Meghan put out a statement about their new media policy? What they said was they wanted to engage with grassroots media organizations and young and up and coming journalists to provide access only to credible media outlets focused on objective reporting. 
So when I saw this tweet earlier today on Twitter, it really caught my attention because after stating that, so far they've worked with Time Magazine, New York Times, and CNN. Not exactly what I think they had in mind. Of course, it could also be that they realized by using those grassroots and small things that they wanted to use that they couldn't get in the press and they need to be in the press. And finally, to end this video, I need to bring up one more thing that has just come out. Meghan Markle has decided she's now going to be a startup investor. Now, I don't know who wrote this article, obviously somebody from her PR team. And I say that because the way the article starts out is to say, and I'm quoting, throughout her nearly half decade on the global stage, um, she was never on the global stage. And long before she made gender equality one of her core causes, the Duchess of Sussex is now extending that mission to the private sector as she begins to build a portfolio of startup enterprises. This is all part of their making money thing because obviously if you invest and it takes off, you get a percentage. So what's the first thing she did with this to help make money? She sent a basket of this to Oprah, who of course sent out a tweet making sure everybody knew that this is going to be her new morning drink. And this, my friends, is how you network and make money. After all, she's using her title to flout the coffee. Um, it's the Duchess of Sussex's coffee brand. You guys are just going to love it. It's from the Duchess. And I have to show you Royal T's tweet, which I think is fabulous. And it reads, that's one way to fight hunger and honor those CNN heroes. Fake an organic moment between friends on the same day for a social media ad from Oprah to promote a company you invest in that donates a big 1% to fighting for an equitable food system. Quite frankly, just the fact that Oprah allowed herself to be used in this way dropped her about 100 points in my book. I mean, I'm, I thought she was better than that. So what do you guys think about all of this? I mean, that's, there's a lot of information there. It's the startup. It's the copying Kate with the UK. It's the Frogmore. Make sure to leave all your comments below. Don't forget to reach out to me by email, suesmith1112 at yahoo.com. And as always, have a fabulous day.